Amen. Amen. Always love coming. I'm, <clears throat> you're doing better at your humor, brother. You're, <laughs> you're not there yet, but at least it makes me smile now anyway. Uh, we just love coming back home. Uh, 42 years ago, I was uh, a member here and on staff at the Christian School. Thank Brother Willette for hiring me, taking a chance on me all these years. He's been my preacher. I'm always a little bit relieved when he's not here because I can wear whatever tie I want. <laughs> he doesn't like my ties. We came up a few weeks ago when he was preaching, and he stopped me after the service. He said, that's a terrible tie. He said, come to my office. I want to, I want to. And so we went to his office and he's got like 50 ties. And I looked through there and I said, preacher, there's nothing in here I would wear. <laughs> but way in the back, there was one that it, it was, it was pretty nice. And so I took it and great, graciously thanked him for it. But I'm wearing the one I want tonight. And if you don't like it, I don't even care. Open your Bibles tonight to the book of Ruth, Ruth chapter number 2. I want to preach to you tonight about rewards. Everybody likes to get rewarded, don't you? Well, let me try that again. Everybody likes to get rewarded, don't you? Sure we do, sure we do. We like uh, to be recognized, we like to uh, see uh, accomplishments. Let me tell you the story and then I'll read the text and we'll get into it. Uh, Israel had not been in the promised land for very long. It's just been one generation since they came out of Egypt and settled in that land that God had promised to Abraham way back. But the Lord said, when, when you come to the land, uh, you're going to be blessed. You're going to have uh, gardens that yield much fruit and orchards and vineyards. Uh, there's just going to be bounty. But in the midst of your bounty, I want you to remember that I'm the one that gave it to you. Uh, by the way, church, in the midst of your blessings, remember that it's God that gives it to you. The Lord said there may come some difficult times. There may come some times when... Uh, uh, things aren't going well. Maybe you're not getting enough rain or maybe you're having some struggles. When these times come, God says, I want you to continue to trust me. I want you to continue to put me first. The Lord said, you don't need to look to the nations around us to try to uh, find the answers. You just look to heaven and I'll give you the answers. Well, a famine came into the land. Difficult time and a man named Elimelech got concerned. He thought, you know, I've got a wife, I've got two boys, and if we stay here in Israel, even though God told us to trust him, if we stay here, things could get really rough. But I've heard that there's food around us. In the land of Moab, they have plenty of bread. Maybe I'll just take my family there. Now listen, sometimes it seems like a good reason Sometimes it seems like it makes sense, but if it's contrary to God, it's a bad choice. It's a bad choice. Elimelech takes his wife, her name is Naomi, and they're his sons, and they go to Moab, and they stayed a lot longer than they thought. In fact, both of his sons got married, and while they're there, Elimelech died. And before long, both of his sons died. And so now you have three widow ladies, Naomi, and her two daughters-in-law, there's Ruth and there's Orpah. Not Oprah, Orpah. And Naomi says to the girl, she says, there's nothing here for me. I'm going back home. Why don't you ladies go back to your homes, go back to your families, go back to your loved ones, go back to your friends. And both of them said, no, 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 no. we're going to go with you. And so they all three started out on the road, and uh, all the way, Naomi's trying to convince them, don't come with me, there's nothing for you, go back to your families. And finally, she convinces Orpah to go home. And so Orpah kissed her mother-in-law and went back home. But Ruth said, I'm not going back. She said, I'm going with you. 
She says, where you go, that's where I'm going to go. And where you live, that's where I'm going to live. And your people, they're going to be my people. And most importantly, she said, your God's going to be my God. And so they went back to the land of Israel, back to the town of Bethlehem, where Elimelech and Naomi were from. When they got there, there's no food, there's no money. But Naomi says, we'll be okay because God has made provision for poor people like us. It's harvest time. The, uh, uh, the barley is, is ready to be harvested. And God made provision. He told all the farmers that in the corners of your fields and in the corners of your vineyards, in the corners of your orchards, don't gather harvest there, but leave the corners for the poor people. And so Naomi said, Ruth, I want you to go, find a field, go to the corners, and surely you'll be able to gather enough grain so that you and I will be able to eat. And so Naomi goes out and she comes to a field. You and I might call it a coincidence, but God's in control. She's in the field of a man named Boaz. And she's in that field and she's gathering her her uh, grain, and Boaz comes to check on the work, see how his harvesters are doing. And off in the corner, somebody catches his attention. He goes, wow, who's that? And they say, why, that's, that's Ruth. It's the daughter-in-law of Naomi. And Boaz says, daughter-in-law, huh? She's already married. No, her husband's dead. He goes, oh. <laughs> wow. He says, I'm telling you what. That girl is a hard worker. He says, send for her. So it's lunchtime and Ruth comes and eats with Boaz. And uh, he finds out a little bit about her. She tells the story how she left her homeland and came to live with Naomi to know about God. And Boaz is impressed. He said, wow, this is amazing. He says, you don't have to worry about gleaning in the corners. He said, you just follow my workers. In fact, I'll, I'll make sure they drop handfuls on purpose for you. He said, your testimony is an encouragement to me. Let's pick up the story and I want you to notice what Boaz says to Ruth about rewards. Ruth chapter number 2 and verse number 6. Well, no, let's go down to verse number 8. I, they're all good. They're all really good. But I, I like verse 8 for this story. Then said Boaz unto Ruth, Hearest thou not, my daughter? Go not to glean in another field, neither go from hence, but abide here fast by my maidens. Let thine eyes be on the field that they do reap, and go thou after them. Have I not charged the young men that they shall not touch thee? When thou art athirst, go unto the vessels, drink of that which the young men have drawn. Then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, Why have I found grace in thine eyes that thou shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I'm a stranger? And Boaz answered and said unto her, It hath fully been showed me all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thine husband, how thou hast left thy father and thy mother and the land of thy nativity and art come unto a people which thou knewest not heretofore, the Lord recompense thy work and a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel under whose wings thou art come to trust. He said, I know all that you've done and I want you to know God is going to recompense you. God is going to reward you for what you've done. Heavenly Father, I ask your blessing tonight. I pray that this simple story might challenge and encourage our hearts. Lord, may we be reminded of our rewards. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 
we, we oftentimes think of a reward as something that a person ha- has earned. For instance, Ruth earned this reward because of her kindness toward Naomi. There are some things you cannot earn. Salvation is free. You can't do a single thing to earn your way to heaven. You you can't get to heaven because you're a good person. Nobody is good enough. You can't get to heaven by joining this church or any other church because there is no church that can get you to heaven. You can't get to heaven by giving money or by turning over a new leaf or keeping the commandments. The only way you can get to heaven is by having your sins forgiven. And the only way that that happens is that God does it for free. Free to you and me, understand Jesus paid a great price. Jesus suffered and bled and died, and on the third day He rose again, but now He offers salvation as a free gift. The Bible in Ephesians reminds us that for by grace are you saved, through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Salvation is a free gift. Nothing you can do to earn salvation. You know, the love of God is a free gift. Nothing you can do to make God love you. I remember when I was in the fifth grade, a new girl moved to our school. And she was She was one of these girls that any guy in fifth grade would be glad if she kind of liked him. So I found out her birthday was coming up. And so I took my life savings, $11.50. And I went to the store and I found this beautiful ladies Timex watch. Gorgeous. For $10. And I bought it for her. And I wrapped it up. I didn't have wrapping paper, but we got the Sunday comics and I wrapped it in the Sunday comics. I mean, who wouldn't want something like that? And I'm thinking, she's mine. This girl, if, if, if she has even a spark of romance about her, is just going to be overwhelmed. On her birthday, I gave her that watch and she was so happy and she wore it and she started liking another guy in our class. (laughs) What's the deal? I tried to buy her attention. I tried to buy her affection. By the way, uh, what I tried, uh, lots of folks try that and I got to tell you, it just doesn't work. You certainly can't buy God's love. God's love is free. Grace is free. It's freely bestowed, we sing, on all who believe. There are some things that are free, but there's some things that are earned. You and I, by our service to God, we are going to earn rewards or we'll earn rebuke. A person that's not saved, they will earn the wages of sin. The scripture tells us it's death. If you're not saved, someday you'll die and you'll go to hell. And in hell you'll recognize that it is all what you deserve because you rejected Jesus Christ. You refuse to get saved. There are some things that are earned. Boaz says to Ruth, you have earned a recompense from God. You have earned a reward from God. The scripture teaches us that those of us who are saved, when we die, we'll we'll go to heaven and we'll appear before the Lord at the judgment seat of Christ. This is not a judgment on our sins. Jesus took care of those on the cross. But rather, this is a judgment of what have you done since you got saved? 
What have you done with your opportunities? What have you done with your talents? What have you done with your times? The Bible is very specific on this. It tells us that, that a record is kept. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 13 says, Every man's work shall be made manifest. Every one of us that are saved, we're going to give an account to God. Every single thing that we have done is going to be made manifest. And then he tells us in the next verse, if any man's work abide, he shall receive a reward. You see, the idea is, the, the Bible teaches us that our works are going to be tried by fire. In my mind, I have this picture of a giant bonfire. And all of our works, everything that we've done in our life is, is going to be put into this bonfire. It'll be set on fire. And the things that really don't matter, I'm not talking about sins, I'm just talking about wasted opportunities, days that go by with no thought or service to the Lord, those things will be burned up, the Bible says, like so much wood and hay and stubble. The important things, the eternal things, the lasting things, they'll survive the fire. They'll remain as, as uh, gold and silver and precious stones. And so when we get to heaven for our faithfulness, for our service, we will be rewarded. But... That's not my sermon tonight. My sermon tonight is that all of your rewards are not in heaven. Ruth's weren't. Boaz says God is going to reward you for what you've done. She didn't know. She just made a choice. I want to serve God. I want to know God. I want to be a blessing. I want to be a help to Naomi. She had no idea. But that day she staggered home with more grain than any gleaner had ever gleaned. And, and Naomi said, where'd you get that? And she said, well, the, the Lord led me to a field of a man named Boaz. And Naomi said, Boaz? I know Boaz. He's single. And he's rich. And because of her faithfulness, Boaz and Naomi fell in love and got married. And God said, I'm going to reward her with a husband. And she was married. And God said, I'm going to reward her again. I'm going to give her a child. And Obed was born. And Obed grew up and got married and had another son. And his name was Jesse, and Jesse grew up and got married, had several sons, the youngest of whom was named David. And Ruth was rewarded by the grand, great grandson that God had given her, who became the king of Israel. You check the generations following, and God rewarded Ruth. She's in the lineage of Jesus Christ. What I'm trying to tell you tonight, folks, is the life that we're living right now. What we're doing for God right now, you don't have to wait to get to heaven to get rewarded. You don't have to wait until we stand at the judgment seat of Christ. No, our rewards come to us day by day by day as we serve the Lord. Let me testify for a little bit. I... I, I got saved. I didn't grow up in a Christian home, but I got invited to camp and I got saved. What a reward the Christian life is. You know, I can remember that, that day before I got saved. I'd heard a sermon about hell and I was scared to death that I was going to hell. I was, I was nervous because I knew that I deserved to go to hell. I knew that I was not saved. I knew that if I stopped breathing, I would be in hell forever and ever. But the next night, an invitation at camp, I walked forward and I got saved. God gave me at that time the peace of God that passes all understanding. From that day to this, I have never one time worried about going to hell. I'm telling you, that's a reward. God gave me joy. I, you ever seen a grumpy Christian? Tell him I'm busy, please. 
if you've ever seen a grumpy Christian, and, and there are some, I always wonder, what is the matter with you? Don't you understand you're a child of God? Don't you understand that, that heaven is your eternal home? Don't you understand you get to be a part of the family of God? Why in the world would we be grumpy? God has rewarded me by letting me be a Christian. Wow, what a privilege that is. And then, almost 41 years ago, Karen and I got married. The Bible says in Proverbs, Whoso findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtain the favor of the Lord. I got to tell you, what a reward she was. I filled out that profile on FarmersOnly.com. <laughs> and she responded. <laughs> All the other guys she clicked on wouldn't respond back. And I did. And what a blessing she has been in my life. For almost 41 years, we've had the privilege of serving God together. We started out our married life uh, at Community Baptist with Brother Jackson, which shows that into every life a little rain must fall. I'm just teasing. I love Brother Jackson. But, but uh, we, we, we were working in the youth ministry. I didn't know anything about being a youth pastor, but, but we just tried to... Uh, love those teenagers and have an influence in their lives. And, you know, every year we get cards, Christmas cards, notes from kids that were in our youth group saying, thank you for the influence. Thank you for having a part in my life. I got to tell you, every time I read one of those cards, every time I think of one of those kids, I thank God for those kind of rewards that God gives you. Then I, then I became pastor in, in Missouri. Uh, when, when I surrendered to preach, I didn't know anything about the ministry. I just knew people were going to hell. And so I told God, I'll give you my life to keep people from going to hell. And God allowed me to go to a church that had a ministry to soldiers at Fort Leonard Wood. And so I, I got to preach the gospel every Sunday night to anywhere from 100 to 600 soldiers. And literally thousands and thousands. Thousands of them got saved. There were uh, female soldiers who trained together with uh, with the guys, and every Sunday night when the soldiers would come forward, I'd look over on this side of the of the auditorium, and Karen would be there with one or two or three or four young ladies, and tears would be running down their cheeks, and she'd be showing them that Jesus saves. Man, what a reward that was. What a reward that was. God blessed us with a son. You know, before he was ever born, uh, we didn't know if we'd have a boy or a girl or a puppy or what. what but, but we said, God, if you'll let us, we'll raise this child for your glory. And as a four-year-old boy, he got saved. I had the privilege of kneeling down beside his bed and leading him to the Lord. And then as a teenager, he surrendered to whatever God would have him to do. And now he's on staff at our church. Sunday night, I had him preach. And, you know, dads shouldn't be like this, but I'm just sitting there, the buttons popping on my shirt. And I just couldn't help but think, Thank you, God. Thank you, God. What a reward to have children who serve the Lord. What a reward to invest your life and see the fruit of that. Jeremiah and his wife have two boys. Both of them got saved. The oldest is named Tyler. And when the, his younger brother came to me one day. He said, Pop, pretty soon I'm going to be six years old. I said, really? What happens when you're six? You're going to get married? No. 
You get your driver's license? No. You're going to get your own apartment? No. I said, well, Kyle, what happens when you, get, when you turn six? He goes, I'm going to get saved. I said, well, why are you going to get, wait till you're six to get saved? He says, because that's when Tyler did it. I said, well, you know, your daddy was four and I was 13 and your grandma, she was eight. And he looked at me almost disgusted and he said, well, Pop, they do it at six now. <laughs> and you know what? When he was six years old, he got saved. Both of our grandsons are saved. They're in our church, and we get to see them almost every day. I never thought I'd be able to do that. You know, we traveled in evangelism for 12 years, and we'd only see them here and there, but God put us at Rochester Hills as the, as the pastor, and who would have thought? And every morning when I have my prayer time, I thank God for the privilege and the joy and the gift of being able to serve together as a family. You see what I'm trying to tell you? You don't have to wait to get to heaven to get your rewards. When we were in Missouri, a fella, he was a rough guy. We didn't have reformers unanimous then, but if we had, he, he would have been our star pupil. He was just a rough guy, but Steve got saved. I'm going to say that again, because a lot of times people get excited when folks get saved. Let me try that. Steve got saved. And man, did God turn his life. He went from drugs and drinking to a guy who was on fire for the Lord. Steve said, uh, I got a son. He lives with his mom, but he's a mess. His mom's a mess, and I was worse, but... I need to get him here in our church. And so Steve brought his son Gary to our church. Gary was a junior in high school, and Gary was a rebel. Man, he had a hard heart. He didn't want anything to do with his dad. He didn't want anything to do with church. But his dad just lived a consistent testimony. And, and one Sunday night, when all those soldiers came forward to get saved, Gary walked the aisle, and he said, I need to get saved too. Gary got saved. A couple years ago, I was preaching a revival meeting. Gary came to hear it, came forward at invitation, surrendered his life to the ministry. Back in uh, December, one of our assistant pastors who'd been in the church for years and years and years retired. And the first person I thought of was Gary. Gary and his family moved up to Rochester Hills. It's so funny. They're from South Carolina. His wife had never been out of the South. And the day that they came, we got 11 inches of snow. And she just stood at the window going, why are people out? They came on staff and to be able to, to, to serve the Lord with uh, a young man that got saved and called to preach in our ministry, I'm telling you, you don't have to get to heaven to get rewards. You say, well, sure, but Brother Hal, you're, you're, you're a preacher. You've been in the ministry all the, these years. Every parent in here who's living for God and trying to do right when I was talking about my rewards, you were thinking about yours. Every grandparent in here who's been faithful serving the Lord, when I was talking about my grandsons, you were thinking about your grandchildren. What I'm trying to tell you tonight is if you'll get faithful and you'll stay faithful, God will give you your rewards, not just when we get to heaven, and those will be wonderful, but the rewards that we have now are incredible. Family came to our church. They had three children. He had been in the army and 
They drove, because they liked our church, they drove 40 miles each way to come to our church. They lived at Fort Leonard Wood. He asked me, he goes, uh, there's lots of kids on post. You suppose we could uh, start a bus route up at Fort Leonard Wood? I said, of course. And so think of this now. On Sunday morning, they would drive 40 miles, get the bus, drive 40 miles back, pick up the kids 40 miles back to church, and then take them home after the service. And they did that for year after year after year after year. When they started, their, their youngest child, a daughter named Renea, uh, mom would hold Renea as she'd go to the door and get the kids. Renea is only two years old. We needed a new teacher for our school this year. Guess who we brought on staff? Renea. I got to see her get saved. I got to baptize her. I got to watch her grow in the Lord. I got to watch her be a teenager. And now she's on staff. Listen, you get serious about God. And you stay faithful. God will reward you day after day after day. You don't do it for the reward. You're not trying to accumulate stars in your crown. It's just a matter of being faithful. I got a, I got an email about a month ago. Some guy said, you, you, you don't know me. We've never spoken, but you were preaching at camp when I was a teenager I was having a really hard time, but all of your messages helped, and I got my heart right with God. In fact, I surrendered to preach that week. He said, I just wanted you to know I'm, I'm an assistant pastor, work with the teenagers, and I'm serving the Lord. I didn't know. If that guy came in and sat on the front row, I'd have no idea who he is. But I can't tell you what a reward that was to get that. You know, one of these days when we get to heaven, someone's going to come up and say, hey, you handed me a tract. Someone's going to say, you knocked on my door. I didn't really have time to talk, but you invited me to church. I never came, but I read that paper you gave me. Someone's going to say, I rode on your bus. Family moved away. We weren't able to come very long, but I got saved. And my brothers got saved and my cousin got saved. Every bus kid has cousins. Yeah. Sunday school teachers, school teachers. Some of you all are going to have somebody come up and say, hey, you worked with me. And you talked about the Lord, and for most part, I thought you were nuts, but I didn't want to show it, but you got, God used you to get a hold of my heart. <laughs> Boaz says to Ruth, he said, uh, God's going to reward you for this. What you've done for Naomi, what did she do? She decided to take care of her mother-in-law. She decided to be a help. She decided to live for God. She decided that the sacrifice of leaving her home and leaving her family and leaving her friends was worth it because she was interested in serving God. Hey, you want to get those rewards? It's pretty simple. Number one, get saved. Number two, get busy. And then number three, and this is the whole key to it, stay busy. Stay busy. How many Christians get on fire for a while and something comes up and they get discouraged? They get busy for the Lord, but their schedule picks up and they've got this iron in the fire and that iron in the fire. No, 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 no. You, you keep God as your priority. You keep serving God as your ministry and your focus and your motivation. Boaz said, the Lord recompense thy work. And a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel. Church, the rewards are out there if you'll just decide to stay faithful. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you tonight for the opportunity to preach this message. 
Lord, I thank you that you are so good to us. And Father, I don't know the hearts, but I'm sure there are lots of folks that have been trying to stay faithful. and Sometimes it gets a little difficult. Or I pray tonight might be that shot in the arm, might be that encouragement to just stick with it. Lord, there are others who are wondering, is it worth it? Can I do it? Lord, I pray that just by stopping and thinking about how good you've been to us and the rewards we've already enjoyed, it might encourage them to get busy and stay busy for you. Your eyes closed and nobody looking. I wonder how many say, pray for me. God challenged my heart. I, I, I needed that message. God has blessed me so bountifully, but, but, but I don't want that to be all. I want some rewards. Looking forward to the product of faithfulness. Pray for me. If you let me do that, raise your hand. Move it up high. Yeah, many, 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 many of us. Thank you. You can put your hands down. Let's stand. I'll pray. If God's dealt with your heart, you come. Father, bless the invitation. I pray that everybody who should come would come. And tonight, dear God, we might rededicate ourselves, rekindle that fire in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Quickly, if you're coming.